Hello and welcome to Quartzlight. Quartzlight, if you don't know, we're a small YouTube channel looking at car brochures from around the world. So if you're interested in that type of thing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Today, we're going to look at the Talbot Horizon and its many names it appeared under. So the Chrysler, Talbot, Simca Horizon, the many names have Horizon and we'll look in this brochure how it did manage to change its name from Chrysler to Talbot. It first arrived in 1978 and ran up all the way till 1987. It was a so-called world car because Chrysler at the same time was also developing the Dodge Omni and the Plymouth Horizon, a similar car and we'll have a quick look at that in this video also. It was first developed under the code name C2 and was designed in the UK by Roy Axe and basically the mechanicals were uh, developed in France and like I say initially being called Simca in France, Chrysler for the rest of Europe. But anyway, let's have a look at a few brochures now and have a look at the whole uh, Horizon journey. So there we go, the Chrysler Horizon, as it says there, the Chrysler Horizon built to win you over. This nice little Chrysler badge on the front at this time. This brochure is from around about 1979. Around the same time, 79 is actually when um, it won the European Car of the Year. We'll just quickly look through this brochure. But we won't go into too much detail. Um, as you can see, a five-door car rather than the Sunbeam being a three-door. The Sunbeam was quite big for its class, so they kept it as a three-door. Kept this as a five-door to show the differences between the two, meaning this one was the larger vehicle. As you can see, simple steel reels. It was only a very basic vehicle. As you can see, a 1.1 litre engine. It was also a 1.3 that you could have as well. This particular one in a nice sort of 70s brown. But you could have uh, more modern colours as well. This is obviously a, a, a blue one. This looks like it's showing a higher spec one, the GL. At this time there was the LS, the GL and the GLS. Still with steel wheels here as you can see and even when we get to the GLS it's displaying its lovely um, hatchback design with an actual rear wiper but even so it's still got those basic steel wheels on it overall it was a nice package lovely comfortable seats pretty good ride and handling for its time and as you can see here a very sort of similar sunbeam steering wheel but like i said a very practical vehicle um hatchbacks are what people in europe wanted at the time and here it goes with a hatchback unfortunately with a high lip but you know often these early hatchbacks kept that high lip um, as it was a stronger design but obviously you had to lift your shopping in and out of it a little bit more difficult than if that lip was nice and low like I say, um, three models at this time, the LS, the GL and the GLS. You could have the LS or the GL with that um, 1118cc engine. You could have the GL or the GLS with a 1294cc engine. This particular brochure originally coming from Leeds. So from around about 1979, the Chrysler Horizon was rebranded the Talbot Horizon, although as you can see in this brochure dated January 1980, it's still showing a Chrysler badge on there, although it's still saying Talbot. Kind of like a little bit of a, a confused time for the Talbot Horizon. They soon sorted that out though. This is in September 1980, so the same year. We've now got a proper Talbot badge on there to replace that um, Chrysler badge which was almost forgotten I guess 
<coughs> but there we go. It is, again, rebranded as the Talbot Horizon. Now, not much has changed really about the car itself, apart from that um, bit of badge engineering, I guess. We've got now um, Talbot badges on there rather than Chrysler badges, but we've also got the arrival of a new model. This new model is called the SX. It's now the top of the range model. But the main difference is it's now got this trip computer, which is quite advanced for the time. So it causes a little bit of a stir. So it's showing things like fuel consumption, average speed, standard on the SX version. But if we look at the specs down there, and we'll have a bit of a closer look at that. And as we zoom in, what I was trying to see is that trip computer. As you can see here, it's now um, available as an optional extra on the GLS, as well as being standard on the SX. We've also got the option of a um, alloy wheel on the GLS and SX. So the newer brochure, like I say, gold must have been the uh, colour of the time, but you could also have in a lovely range of colours at this time as well. Again, the same sort of specs, so the LS, the GL, the GLS, which is you can have in this lovely blue interior to match your blue car, which I think is fantastic. But you can also have that SX. Again, showing this um, interesting trip computer, which, like I say, it doesn't sound much today, but it was quite advanced for its time. Again, if we just have a quick look at the spec page and... Um, Let's just have a quick zoom in on this one as well. Here we go, a close look at the specifications. One thing I did forget to mention um, before I got so excited with that trip computer, that we can see on the SX version, it's front wheel drive, three speed auto, auto transmission on that particular one. And if we look down even further, we can also see that it's got a 1.5 or a 1442cc engine on that particular model. Also interestingly, on this little graph, we can also see that trip computer. Optionals now on a GL as well as a GLS and still standard on that SX model. We can also see the light alloy wheels as well. Optional extras on the GLS and the SX. While we're here, we might as well have a quick look at the uh, colour choices. Lovely interior colour choices, parchment, blue, grey. Even got a honey as an interior colour on the uh, higher spec um, GLS version. Exterior colours are really quite vast. Uh, ermine white, royal blue, cherry, tartan green. The jonquil, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but that's yellow. Uh, parchment, sweet corn, conifer green, bark metallic, silver metallic, blue steel metallic, willow green metallic, peony metallic, tapestry beige metallic. What a fantastic colour range. You would never get that on a small cheap car today. You would get grey, 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 white, black, I guess. If you're really looking, there might be a red in there. But, you know, I wish they still did this fantastic colour range today. Yes, there's more to the Horizon story. There's also the uh, North American spec versions as well. So here we've got the 1983 Plymouth Horizon and also the 1983 Dodge Omni. Looking pretty identical, don't they? So at the same time there was um, developing the um, European Horizon, there was also developing the North American Horizon and Omni. They look identical. In fact, none of the panels do actually match up with the European versions, although the design is pretty much the same, isn't it? Mechanically, very different, yes, but the design is the same. They tried to hide that it had 
anything to do with Europe whatsoever though. As you can see at the bottom, the American way to get the, your money's worth. America's driving machine, they really didn't want to associate it with the European models at all. But mechanically, it was different. It had a Max Furson strut suspension on the, these rather hideous uh, American uh, aluminium bumpers. But also um, different engine choices as well on, the, um, on these cars. I think one of these shows the different engines. Yeah, on this particular one, it does show the different um, engines on there. This is a nice one to end on, so I think we'll just have a closer look at this back sheet. So there we go, the engine choices on this one. 1.6, 1.7 and a 2.2. Of course, engines size is not as important in the US. They don't have the same fuel economy standards that they have to meet. So the availability of a larger, less efficient engine is possible. Interestingly on this particular model, apart from the nice colours, we've also got some badge engineering there going on this time for Mitsubishi. So there we go, the end of the Horizon story. Not many Horizons around these days on this side of the uh, ocean or that, even Europe or North America, not many left. The real issue, it did have a lot of corrosion problems. Thank you once again for watching Quartz Light today. There'll be many more brochures coming in the near future, so please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>